will be now read a second time. The Assistant Minister for Social Services and Disabilities. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I rise today to speak in support of the Copyright Amendment Disability and Other Measures Bill. As the Assistant Minister for Social Services and Disability Services, I have a particular interest in this bill because it introduces a range of three amendments that will, one, streamline and simplify the existing copyright exceptions and limitations for the use of copyright material by the disability sector. It will simplify, number two, the preservation exceptions for copyright material in libraries, archives and key uh, cultural institutions. And three, it will consolidate and modernise the statutory licences that allow educational institutions to use and pay licence fees for works and broadcasts and introduce new standard copyright terms for published and unpublished works and for Crown copyright in original works. To enhance access to copyright material for persons with a disability, this bill replaces the current exception and statutory licence schemes for disability access in the Copyright Act, with two new simplified and more flexible exceptions. The fair dealing exception allows persons with a disability or those assisting them to make accessible copies of material similar to the previous exception for persons with a disability but expressed in the more familiar fair dealing language. The new exception for organisations will permit educational institutions and not-for-profit organisations to make accessible format copies for people with a disability where the material cannot be obtained in that format within a reasonable time at an ordinary commercial price. Mr Deputy Speaker, the National Disability Strategy 2010-2020 provides a 10-year national policy framework representing a shared national approach to improving the lives of Australians with disability, their families and their carers. We mustn't forget that there are 4.6 million Australians who identify as living with a disability. The strategy is based on the belief that all Australians should have fair and equal access to the full range of mainstream programs and services available, whether it is employment, healthcare, education, transport, housing, or public <coughs> facilities and infrastructure, or in this case, copyright material. The strategy's second implementation plan, Driving Action 2015-18, was released in December 2016 and outlines the government's continued commitment to driving improvements across the strategy's six policy areas. These six policy areas are, one, inclusive and accessible communities. This refers to the physical environment, including public transport, parks, buildings and housing, digital information and communications technologies, civic life, including social sporting, recreation and cultural life. Two, rights protection, justice and legislation. This refers to statutory protection such as anti-discrimination measures, complaints, mechanisms, advocacy, the electoral and justice systems. Three, economic security. Jobs, business opportunities, financial independence, adequate income support for those not able to work and housing. Four, personal and community support inclusion and participation in the community, people-centred care and support provided by specialist disability services and mainstream services, informal care and support. Five, learning and skills, early childhood education and care, schools, further education, vocational education, transitions from education to employment, lifelong learning, and six, health and wellbeing, health services, health promotion and the interaction between health and disability systems, well-being <coughs> and enjoyment of life. In September 2016, the Council of Australian Governments, COAG, Disability Reform Council, agreed to reinvigorate all governments' efforts to drive progress under the strategy. Examples of the achievements that have been made across the strategy's key policy outcome areas include improvements to the disability access to premises building standards. The premises standards came into effect in May 2011 and coincided with changes to the Building Code of Australia, resulting in an improvement to the accessibility of public buildings. The standards were reviewed in 2016 with a government response expected in the near future. 
Improvements to the Disability Standards for Accessible Public Transport 2002, the transport standards have resulted in considerable improvements in Australia's public transport network. Work is currently underway to modernise the standards and develop a whole of journey guide. Improvements to television captioning. The Australian Government introduced the Broadcasting Services Television Captioning Standard 2013 for all television broadcasters. We are considering a range of improvements to the Disability Standards for Education 2005. The More Support for Students with Disability Initiative invested $300 million from 2012 to 2014 and included professional development for school staff, more effective use of allied health professionals in schools and resources to support differentiation of curriculum. We are implementing a nationally consistent collection of data on school students with disability. The National Arts and Disability Strategy encourages improved participation and access to the arts for people with disability in terms of physical access to funding and opportunities for people with disability to present their work. All <coughs> jurisdictions have moved to comply with Web Content Accessibility Guidelines Version 2 under the standards Web Accessibility National Transition Strategy. The Australian Government has also developed National Inclusive Playground Design Guidelines for accessible playgrounds, and I was pleased to visit the electorate of Gilmore last Friday, where a great organisation, the Bay Push, has built a fabulous accessible playground. Mainstream Australian government agencies have adopted protocols for engaging people with disability and their representative organisations in the development of policies and programs. This government is reforming disability employment to improve participant choice and control over the services they receive create more competition between providers and encourage more employers to hire people with disability and assist them in the workplace. I should also mention Job Access. Job Access is a national hub for workplace and employment information. The Job Access site has undergone a major <coughs> redevelopment and was relaunched on 1 July 2016. I'd also like to take this opportunity to recognise the Job Access program, which in February this year won an international award for innovative policy at the Zero Conference of the United Nations in Vienna. And of course, the National Disability Insurance Scheme. The national rollout also represents a significant achievement under the strategy, and the coalition government is fully committed to fully funding the NDIS. While I could continue to list the achievements that have been made under the National Disability Strategy, I acknowledge there is still more to be done. This bill will help to make that happen. This bill will contribute to ensuring that people with disability live in accessible and well-designed communities with the opportunity for full inclusion in social, economic, sporting and cultural aspects. I look forward to seeing the Copyright Amendment, Disability Access and Other Measures Act added to this list of achievements. Other measures contained in this bill just make sense for all people. This bill replaces the current outdated preservation copying provisions in the Copyright Act with simpler, uniform and technology neutral provisions that give libraries, archives and key cultural institutions greater flexibility in copying and the digitisation of copyright material to preserve or administer their collections. Libraries and archives <coughs> will no longer have to wait for published material to be damaged or deteriorate or lost or stolen before making a preservation copy, ensuring that valuable historic and cultural materials will be available for future generations. Digital preservation and research copies will be made able to be made available to people at libraries, archives and key cultural institutions, provided reasonable steps are taken by the institution to ensure that copyright of the material is not infringed. I know these provisions are welcomed by the many Brisbane City Council libraries in my electorate, including Mitchelton, Tawong, Indrapilly and Kenmore. It would be remiss of me as a federal member for Ryan with one of the best universities in the world, and I'm talking <coughs> about the University of Queensland at St Lucia, not to note the support from Universities Australia for this bill. Universities Australia urges the parliament to pass the bill to streamline copyright for educational institutions without affecting the interests of copyright holders. The bill will update and simplify the licences that allow universities to use copyright material in return for payments to rights holders. 
The bill consolidates and simplifies the existing statutory licences in parts 5 and 5b of the Copyright Act that allow educational institutions to copy and communicate works and broadcasts in a new educational statutory <coughs> licence. By removing the prescriptive and administratively burdensome record-keeping requirements of the existing licences, educational institutions and copyright collecting societies will have the flexibility to agree on their own licensing arrangements for the use of copyright material. These amendments have been developed following a collaborative initiative of, and in close consultation with, all relevant stakeholders. Mr Deputy Speaker, this measure makes long overdue changes to the duration of copyright protection in unpublished copyright materials. Currently, if copyright materials are unpublished, they remain in copyright in perpetuity, so their productive uses may be lost. This bill simplifies and harmonises copyright terms by creating new standard terms of protection for original published and unpublished works, sound recordings and films. These terms are consistent with the requirements under international conventions and agreements to which Australia is a party. The new copyright terms will commence on 1 January 2019 <coughs> and will apply to copyright materials created before 1 January 2019 that remain unpublished or otherwise not made public at that date. Mr Deputy Speaker, libraries and archives hold large numbers of unpublished materials which are an important part of Australia's cultural heritage. Setting a term of protection for unpublished materials will allow greater use of the considerable cultural value of these materials. I commend this bill to the House. Thank the